First of all, self-disruption for banks means responding to the digital disruptors in the financial services field, whether it's in consumer banking side, making it easier to open and fund accounts or the institutional banking side, you know, making it easier to transfer funds internationally or even stock trading. We're seeing lots of easy to use digital apps that customers are responding to. And this is drawing customers away from from the traditional banks. They need to respond in kind and provide the same kinds of service, if not better, to the customers to keep the customers and attract new customers. There are really three pillars to this that I see we can talk more about. One of them is the programming model, because now we're talking about mobile and web interactions, and that's a different programming model than the traditional enterprise programming model that most banks are very familiar with, having grown up before the web. Another one is the culture of change. We need to push, banks need to push the changes out much more quickly into production. They need to think about their team structure, the organization structure, all of the things that support the innovation needed for disruption. And the third thing really is really the most important one, which is focusing on the customer and solving the problem for the customer instead of thinking about this as the bank employees are the ones using the computer systems. Now it's the customers using it and they have a different bar of acceptance of usability of uh, what they want to see in something. In other words, for employees, you can sort of roll out the bank system and expect employees to adapt to it and train because you're paying them. But for customers, they have their choice of institutions. You have to be attractive to them mm-hmm. and make it easy and simple and frictionless as possible. They need to change the focus. All right, so thank you for setting the scene there. Let's talk more about uh, the customer then. How can the internal disruption that comes with the new technology strategies benefit the customer? Part of it's a mindset shift. Banks often will have innovation centers that they'll try, that they'll sponsor to try to be more innovative and bring in new technologies because they know the fintechs are using technologies to gain a competitive advantage. These would be the cloud native technologies, the web programming model, the mobile programming model, uh, perhaps more significantly machine learning and artificial intelligence models to help them adapt very quickly. Part of this is though working with the the customer. The thing is to get the changes out there and get the customer reaction. A lot of the innovation centers will take the approach of, hey, we have a great new idea. Let's push that out and let's get this to, you know, get more customers and do more business with this great new idea that we have. Mm -hmm. But innovation really, uh, and I attended a a seminar on this at uh, Cornell Tech once and the professor was very clear. He said, oh, that's the wrong way. Innovation is all about solving the customer's problem. You've got to get out there put your app out there, put a feedback loop, get machine learning, AI involved, getting the customer feedback and tweaking the application, which leads to the other pillar about rapid change and breaking up the problem into smaller pieces. So a lot of these things really, really need to be done. It's a major shift. Some very good advice there as well, Eric. Thank you for that. Uh, So yes, what type of strategies then could formalize uh, this natural disruption that you're talking about to create a process of uh, instead structured self-disruption and uh, tell us how does this fit in uh, with the wider regulatory landscape? The two questions there and one is following the digital disruptors and uh, implementing the best practices that they have pioneered around this. If you look at big uh, companies, leading digital companies such as the Amazon uh, retail company, Uber, Netflix, uh, Airbnb, they all pursue a strategy of breaking the problem up into microservices or smaller units of work that they give to autonomous teams. They assign these functions. For example, on the Amazon website, the click to pay now button is actually a microservice assigned to a small team who's able to push out changes to that function anytime they want without worrying about changes to the rest of the page. Now, if you look at traditional systems, generally a change like that would be bundled, bundled into a weekly or a monthly change uh, release of an entire application. So they really need to rethink how applications are structured, how they can be broken into smaller agile units of work and deployed uh, very quickly. So it's about iterative change, about getting something out there, being able to respond quickly, change, push change out there daily, uh, weekly instead of monthly. Well, Eric, thank you very much for sharing insights. I'm looking forward to continuing our discussion in the next episode. And for those that can't wait and want to learn more, I urge them to take a look at our long read, Reprogramming the Bank, Shifting Gears on Digital Disruption, and also encourage those to sign up for our webinar on the 22nd of February, From Culture to Business to Innovation, Leveraging Cloud to Reprogram Banks. But Eric, until then, thank you very much. Anna, thank you. Looking forward to it.